Hello friends, welcome to Floss Tube and Variety Show number 30. Today is January 28th in 2022. I'm Emily Williams in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. And we are under another winter storm, winter weather advisory. It's really kind of crazy that it's three weekends in a row that we have had the threat of winter weather in the last two weekends it has materialized. We've had sleet, snow. In fact, there's snow on the ground still from last weekend, possibly even from the first weekend of bad weather, even though we've had some warm days, but it just hasn't been enough to melt the snow. I know that sounds like uh, very much par for the course up north. I know some of my viewers live in much colder climates than North Carolina. But for us, it's, it's quite unusual. So maybe there'll be snow on the ground tomorrow morning. So floss tube means I talk about cross stitch and a variety show means I talk about something else and we'll see what it turns out to be. So um, under the roof of glue, blue, under the roof of a blue Ionian weather is the painting that uh, Golden Kite has made into a cross stitch. This is a small version. You can get a bigger version on their website. This is big enough for me. And I have been working on it this week, mainly up in that rose bush up there. I've put in about seven or 800 stitches up there. It's hard to tell. And it's taken quite a bit of time because that's a lot of confetti, but I really like how it's looking. You can see there's some pink in there for the roses themselves. And I'll fill in a little more in that area and then I'll move down back into the marble steps section. Uh, it's actually faster to stitch in the marble steps because there are larger areas of color. So that's, that's fun. I'm glad to be back into that one. I've also been working on Flea Market Flowers, which is a design by Lori Holt. Uh, and I've been making progress. I enjoy it very much. I really have had fun with this. I'm sorry it's so wrinkled. If you watched my videos back last summer when I actually started this, you'll remember that I um, complained about this fabric because it's it's 16 count white Ada and it's very, very stiff. And what I have done is I've just been working it with my hands, you know, wadding it up and so on to get it a little softer and that's worked. But it does show the hoop marks a lot and I have not bothered to take it upstairs and iron it before making a video. Sorry, but I'm actually making pretty fast progress on it. I, I know that may not appear that way to you, but I feel as if it is and I'm enjoying it. Uh, so we'll see. I'm sure I'll keep going on that this week. And then the other thing that I've worked on this week is I have started the commission uh, piece that my friend Am Anne, boy, I'm having trouble with consonants tonight, Anne commissioned, and I'm using this book, trying to get it without weird glare, uh, The Ultimate Sampler Motif Source Book by Brenda Keyes. Um, it's, this is just a book, I'll just flip through it real quickly. It's just a book of things from antique samplers that Brenda Keyes has extracted, charted in this book so that stitchers such as myself can make up our own samplers. So I do have a start. So I'll show you the start. Um, that dimension there is 80 stitches wide. So that's about four and a half inches on uh, 18 count Ada. And this is gonna be a long, narrow sampler. And so I have a full width of fabric here. Very, very long. Uh, which I'm, which the biggest challenge right now is to figure out how to keep it out of my way. But I am enjoying this. Um, and we'll see this little zigzag line. Of course, I'll carry it across. Then I'm gonna do some narrow 
unassuming little border item in there. And then I'll do an alphabet. That'll be the next thing, I think. Because every sampler needs at least one alphabet and three or four would be better, wouldn't it? So I'm sure there'll be alphabets in here. Um, that's fun. There is uh, those two colors are five DMC 550 and 553. DMC 550 is the darker one, and um, 553 is the is a medium purple. And then I'm using DMC 937, which is a green olivish olivey green, which I will incorporate in the next little border in a, some small way. And then I will be adding in, I think, a dark gold or medium. I think a dark gold because some, for instance, I have some bird motifs that I want to put in it. And birds with green beaks and legs look kind of funny. So I'd rather use gold, a dark gold for those. And I'm keeping that project in this nice project bag that my friend Leslie made me and gave me for Christmas, which I'm enjoying. So that's what I have actually underway in the way of cross stitch. And if you've watched some of my recent videos, you know that I've talked about a lot of things I want to do this year. And I don't know whether I'll start anything new this coming week, although I'm very tempted to do so. So we'll see. Um, I have so many things I would like to do. I'm right now, in addition to cross stitch, so maybe this is a segue into variety show. I've been working on some quilts and I've been making lists of quilts that I need to or want to make this year. And uh, so there's that. I'm making a quilt for my friend Cindy, which is well underway. It's uh, I'm making good progress on that. I Probably next week I'll have the top finished. It's a pretty uh, straightforward pattern. I am making a quilt for a friend of mine this year, which I'll show you some of the fabric some other time. I am making a quilt for a family member who probably does not watch my videos, but just in case he does, I won't say it. But I might later in, once I'm underway with it, I might show you and just instruct said family member to look away. Don't look, don't listen. We'll see. I have a lot of work to do in planning. The, the last two quilts I mentioned have a lot of planning and design work to do. Um, so the other thing I really wanted to talk about is Tar Heel basketball. I am a fan. I am a fan of the UNC Tar Heels. Any sport they play, I'm a fan of them, but especially the men's basketball. And I uh, started being a fan back 20, 30 years ago, probably, when a friend of mine, Margie, uh, did not have cable, and we did have cable, and so she came over to watch basketball games at our house. And I actually didn't know much about basketball. I didn't get it, didn't understand it. But I really enjoyed watching Margie watch basketball. And she was given tickets to a game once and she invited me to go with her and my eyes were opened. Being there, seeing the whole court at once, seeing the benches, seeing the strategy, more completely than you can see on television really uh, got me much more interested in the game. And since then, I've been a fan. Interestingly, I was a graduate student in 1982 when the Tar Heels won the national championship. I, gr I got my master's degree that year from UNC and I didn't even know what was going on. I was so oblivious to it. Too bad because I could have gone to some games that season as a graduate student, gotten tickets, and seen Michael Jordan play. So I missed out. Uh, Michael Jordan is the f most famous male men's basketball player, of course. So in recent years, at least 
15 years, I'm gonna say, I have had season tickets. Not because I qualify to buy season tickets, you have to be somebody to be able to even buy season tickets, but because my friend Ivis qualifies because she is a staff member and, and now retired and she still qualifies. And so I've been able to buy season tickets and way back you could buy half season tickets and every other year you would get the Carolina Duke game, which is the premier college basketball game at anywhere each season. There are two of them, one here in, in Chapel Hill and one in Durham at Duke University Cameron Indoor Stadium. And it used to be that I, I mean, back before I had tickets, before I was buying tickets, it was on my bucket list to see Carolina Duke play basketball. And then I started getting season tickets half season and every other year I got to see it. And I would say more than half of the time, Carolina has won in the years that I've had tickets to that game. A few years ago, they stopped offering half season tickets and you had to buy a full season. And so I did. And therefore I go to the Carolina Duke game every year. It is, it is the most exciting sporting match I have ever been to. Well, yes, I think that's true. I think I can say that. It's very, very, very loud, even at the Smith Center, which is a large arena. And it's exciting, and no matter if the, if the Car Tar Heels are good or not good that year, there's always a chance that we could beat Duke. And, um, Sometimes we beat them under, in circumstances you wouldn't think we would. And sometimes we lose. We can snatch defeat from the jaws of victory very handily. And we've made some very stupid moves sometimes during that game. But, so these are ticket stubs from a lot of different years, not all years. I don't think I've kept all my ticket stubs, but these are some of the games that I've been to. And one of the things I think that's interesting is to look back at the Carolina Duke game stubs. Again, I don't think I kept, I'm sure I didn't keep them all, or I don't have them all here, but here's a ticket from 2009. I don't remember whether we won this game or not, but the thing that I'm gonna point out about it is that the price of this ticket was $45. That's per seat in 2009. And, uh, Though that year, I happen to remember, I came across another ticket stub from that year that the regular ACC games were $20. So it was more than twice as much to get the ticket to the Duke game as to any other game. And that shows you the relative value of those games. So this is from the 2016-17 season. This is the season after the heartbreaking loss in the final seconds of the NCAA championship game. And here, this ticket was $83. So that was in 2016, so nine years later. This is in 2017, after we won the national championship, ticket at $95. This was two years ago, 2019, $140 for the Carolina Duke game. And I looked, so they don't, because, I don't know if it's because of COVID or why, but they don't issue tickets like this anymore. Now you download a PDF and you print it or you scan it at the uh, turnstile on your phone. Um, but I, I looked up just to see what is the price of the Carolina Duke game this year, $180 per seat. Yes, yes, I spent that much money. I could buy almost enough fabric to make a queen size quilt for $180. What do you think of that? But I'll tell you, that game is uh, coming up on February 5th. Now, this particular season, because of COVID concerns, my friend and I have not, my friend Ivis, Hi, Ivis, maybe you're watching, have not been to any games together. This past Monday, 
I went to my first basketball game since early, since early 2020, before COVID, so in two years, with my friend Sonia. And we saw the Tar Heels beat. Wow. See, one of the problems with not having a physical ticket stub is it's hard to fix in my mind who we played. Well, sorry, you're gonna have to look it up. That's pretty funny. Um, I'll put it, I'll put a little thing down here that says who we played. We, we did win, it was much closer a game than it should have been, I'll tell you that. I didn't go Wednesday night, we had another game, and again, we won that game, but we didn't win as big as we should have. Tomorrow, I'm taking a friend to uh, UNC versus NC State. Now, I've been to you know many of those games over the years, and NC State in other seasons has been not good. In fact, I remembered clearly a game where the Tar Heels were leading, where they didn't even, the NC State team did not even break into double digits until probably 15 minutes into the first half. And when they finally hit 10 points, the UNC crowd cheered for them. So they are, they are not typically, traditionally, they are not a good team. I understand they are a good team this year, so hopefully we can win um, tomorrow. And then I will go to the Carolina Duke game on February 5th, which is at, I believe it's at 8 p.m. February 5th, Eastern Standard Time. If any of you are watching from another time zone and you want to tune in, pretty sure that game will be on ESPN. It's a national draw in terms of television audience because it is probably the chief rivalry of college of men's basketball, men's college basketball. So great game, it'll be a good game, it'll be loud. Um, you know, my Apple Watch has a decibel meter on it and I'm always curious as to what it says. Uh, at the game Monday night that I attended, even though the place was about 40% full is all, we had 100 decibels, so it'll be, it'll be loud for the Carolina Duke game. So that'll be what I'm doing the evening of February 5th. And my friend Ivis is going to go with me to that game. It, I don't know if after that game we'll go to any other games because there's this worry, this worry about being in crowds indoors, in the bus, that kind of thing. But we'll see, hopefully there will be no disease passed along. So that is all I have to talk about tonight. Uh, it is evening and I've shifted my uh, angle of view because it's strange with the window behind me. There's strange reflections, which I thought would be distracting. So I just rotated my view a little bit here. But anyway, it's evening. I hope you have a good evening and night and a good rest of your weekend. Oh, this is Friday. I hope you have a good weekend and a good time stitching or hanging out with your friends and family, whatever it is that you're doing, watching college sports on television. And that's all for now. Many blessings to you, friends.